Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo flawless run on the Prophecy Dungeon. I done this live on stream a couple of days ago, so in this video, I think there's like two cuts of about, all together I've cut about 10 minutes of the video. It was just where I was sitting explaining to my chat about mods or stuff that they were asking me. If anybody's interested in the unabridged version, then you'll get it on one of my streams. It's already uploaded on the channel. Now, I think this is my second flawless run. I've done it on con This is a console run. I've already s done the solo flawless on PC, but this is the first time I've uploaded a run. I do use what you would class as the best weapons to do this. With this run, I am going to re upload, redo, and re upload one without using Mountaintop Anarchy. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you. My strategy and thoughts for doing each each section without dying, basically. So, as you can see, I'm using Top Tree Dawn Blade. That's going to be so I can skip the very first section. I don't really want to have to do that section. Then I'm going to be switching to Well. Once we get the first boss out of the way, I will be then switching to Devour for the rest of the, the run. I'll be using Mountain Top the whole time. Haven't made too many videos with the Mountain Top. And with sunset and being a real thing, I've de I decided, well, why not? I've had it for a long time. Why not use it for something that's going to be really strong for? Because it is really strong for this dungeon. I'm going to be starting with the Recluse. Then I'm going to be switching to the Arsenic Bite. And then I'm going to be switching to Tatara's Gaze for a bit. Then I will go back to the, the, the bowl. All of them have taken spec on. Fallen Guillotine now. My Fallen Guillotine, as you can see, I've got it on Tempered Edge. I do have Jagged Edge, but I keep it on Tempered Edge for when I'm rallying flags because you get a heap more ammunition. Once I've once I've rallied the flag, then I'll change back, but I keep the ammo, so it's, it's kind of worth it just for that couple of seconds. Swordmaster's Guard and the usual uh, Relentless and Warwind Blade, really good perks that kind of synergize up. And I believe this is the god rule, so people say. Taking spec on the sword as well. I will then be changing to 21% delirium and then anarchy for the boss. So as you can see, armor-wise, I've got three pieces of Last Wish armor on because they support taking mods. So we've got major resist, special ammo finder, and taking armaments on the helmet. Speaks for itself. Uh, I've, I've got Aphidian Aspects on, but I'm going to be running Controverse Holds for the first part of it. Aphidian Aspects, I've got... Concussive Dampener, but it's more so because they're the only Void Gauntlets I've got for Enhanced Grenade Launcher Reloader. The chest plate, the chest plate is uh, Last Wish one. I've I, I the boots I've got on. I don't know why I never put Last Wish boots on, but it's I think it's because me. It, if it was me, if if for the purposes of suggestion, maybe try and just if you've got Void Gauntlets that you can put on, uh, or or you know, so you can put the enhanced grenade launcher loader on, then you don't need an exotic set. Major resist, uh, grenade launcher reserves, large armor reserves, and taken invigoration. Obviously, taken invigoration, I get my rift back every time I kill an elite, uh, or major, sorry. Grenade launcher reserves, for the obvious, and large arm reserves, because it works for all the heavies. So that's, that's, a, that's a really good way to Kind of doesn't matter what weapons I put on, I'm gonna have extra ammunition for them. The boots, you as I say, you could put last wish boots on and run another taken barrier. I've got uh solar boots on, solar damage, uh, resistance, special ammo scavenger, enhanced sword scavenger <clears throat> for reasons that uh, there was just nothing else to put on there, so that that's a nothing kind of that's a nothing perk. If you have void gauntlets, then you probably could go with like taking charge and hi uh, high energy fire. They would be really good. Boss resist, oppressive darkness, and taking barrier. As I say, they they, they all speak for themselves. But if it, if if I had the right armor on this character, I would probably have ran uh, full taken armor, or at least I would have had at the minimum of those three. And then I'd have ran two pieces of armor that would have supported uh, 
the seasonal mod so i would have had taking charge or something like that and high energy fire increase the amount of damage you do probably the best one probably the best ones taking charge is that that's the one where you pick up orbs and become charged for light that's probably what i would have ran and as i say i am definitely going to be running for the whole of this uh for the whole time after i come off of middle tree uh dawn blade for the for the well of radiance i'll be running devour devour really saves your backside in this quite quite considerably so now that we're in we're gonna go for the skip as soon as you get in there's gonna be like a dome in front of you a big globe jump on the globe look up to your left there's a tube jump into the tube and start sword swiping all the way to the top when you reach as far as the sword swipes will take you that is when you use your your dodge ability your icarus dash you get two of them and you use that to dash up the side of this platform and land on top of it i sword swipe to land on top of it and and if you don't get up the first time just keep sword swiping until your icarus dash recharges and, and do it again so this first boss it's not really too difficult so that most people by now will know the premise of this whole raid uh taking knights when you kill them they produce motes of light depending on what shade you're in depends on what motes of light you produce this area it's always too light too dark but it can change it changes in the other areas and kind of switches things up so you've got to learn how to know you're in the light and dark and so on and so forth there is a visual uh, marker on your screen at the bottom of your screen you'll see it changing here to go dark that lets me know I'm going to produce dark modes. In this area, as I say, what I do, as soon as I spawn in, I do what I've got to do with rallying the flag, and then I, I hit this area here. There's a wall behind me. I put a well down. Once I kill that knight, I will get the well back. The rift, sorry, not the well. And then I kill that the first knight, and I'll get dark modes. Then I, then I go for the second knight. I'm not really too bothered on ads at this moment in time. But you can clear the ads before you do that. The reason I'm not bothered about the ads too much is I feel as if I'm I'm in a good place here. And the knights are just in perfect place. I'm in, I'm in perfect cover to, to actually do what I need to do. Now you might be wondering what I've done. As you can see on the screen, what I've done on the screen there. This is one of the first times, lucky me, that it happened while I was recording. Or at least while I was on stream and I got the flawless. If you jump up in between the two fonts, now you can see I had, as you, uh, uh, as you would have seen, I had dark motes. So I jumped up between the two fonts of dark motes and activated my slam. Most of the time, in fact, this is one of the only times it didn't actually do it. If you're right in the middle of the two fonts, it will activate both of them. Meaning you only have to slam twice. It's no big deal if it doesn't work. You just then have to go through. You'll see me try it again here with the light ones. I got the two light and jumped in between the two fonts of light and tried to slam and it just never worked. I maybe wasn't right in the center or I wasn't high enough. Now, my recommendations for doing this, you'll see I try and stay mobile. Now, don't focus too much on trying to kill knights. Get shots on each of the knights. You can see they're quite low now. So when I push, because that's that's the idea. When you push, what you want, you don't want to have to be fighting, fighting the knights. You want to just push, shoot, and they're dead. That's the idea of getting them low. So I try and move around the map, putting shots on the knights, keeping them, you know, be careful not to shoot the same knight twice if you're wanting to do it quickly. Another kind of tactic that I have is I always try and I always try. Now, it's uh, it's not an exact science sometimes, but I always try and leave it so that I've got a dark moat at the end. Because for the majority of this, having a dark moat left at the end means that you're 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 firing from cover. It's a lot safer to be trying to produce motes when you're in cover. I'm not saying to get the both both light ones out the way first, but you can if you want. I don't. I get a dark, and then I go for two lights, and then a dark. And then once you've slammed them all, put the well down, 
and start hammering away at the boss. Now, I think most people know this by now. It's probably something that will change in the future. The whale kind of is a cheese for this, if you like. It's not really, but for some reason, the taking can't block in the whale. So they can't block your shots. When the, the goblins come in, they can't defend. So you can see normally he wouldn't be taking no damage here because he's being uh, protected by his little minions. It doesn't work when he's in the well, and it's pretty much a guaranteed one phase. So as soon as I kill him, we'll just keep going because it, we're you know, more run along quite quickly here. As you can see, I've changed now to the bow. 21% uh, delirium, and I'm, the mountaintop will stay on for the whole run. The reason I use 21% delirium, a few people when I was doing this in chat said, oh, why don't you use this, why don't you use that? I've got a very specific way I do it. I don't, I'm not really... Why don't you use Risk Runner for the Hexahedron Room and all this type of stuff? When we get to the Hexahedron Room, I'll explain why I don't use Risk Runner. But the reason I use these weapons is because I can range, I've got heavy, and my primary is basically a heavy as well. So as soon as I drop in, this is heaven and hell, as soon as it's the wasteland, as soon as we drop in, we're going to have this massive invisible minotaur. I always kill the invisible minotaur straight off the bat because it gives my uh, grenade a chance to, to recharge before I engage. And I'm going to show you in the distance here where the secret chest is if you don't already know. Once you kill this guy, when, as soon as you come in, it will, it will just be slightly off to your right. It's like a war sap with three... Right in front of us, that's a war sap with three kind of pillars, three spikes coming off it. Just to the right of it, right there, is like a stone pillar on a, on like a, a sand dune. Go over the, go over it, and it's a structure. If you look at the base of the structure, there's like gold sand, and in front of that, there's a, a little opening. That's where the secret chest is. So the idea of this area, it's again, without. Trivial, trivial. I'm, I'm trying not to make this sound all trivial, but this is like patrol, right? You've got three blights in each section, so if, there's three lots of these you've got to do. Three blights. With the blights, you get, and for each blight, you get a kind of heavy elite enemy. There's three snipers, and then there's all these thrall. What I try to do here is activate my devourer, and this is for each time I start the encounter, each set of three blights, I will activate my devour using my melee, I will go into the first blight, and I will w wait for the thrall to follow me, and I will throw a grenade at the blight on the ground. Because I've got oppressive darkness, that obviously weakens the blight, means I can melt it pretty quickly, and then anything that runs at me gets killed by the grenade, which also gives me health, uh, ammo, and my grenade back. This time for this one right here, it didn't work because the ads were too far away and my devourer ran out. You'll see me firing off mountaintop shots randomly. That's to give myself an... That's to make sure I can pick special up because when you pick special up with a 21% delirium or heavy for that matter, it overloads the, the magazine by almost double. Once you've cleared an area, you'll see Tolan souls in the very center of the areas. Once you've cleared the area... Walk up to Tall and so and he will fly off in the direction you need to go to the next blights. Because if not, then you've got to get to a high point, kind of jump up, look around. It's not that it's not because it's tricky or it's just time saving. It's just a time saving device. So to, uh, again, what I found and other people might find it's it's slightly different. I find if you don't take those giant minotaurs out, they kind of follow you about a little bit. They're drawn towards the combat, and there's nothing worse than when you're doing well, shooting the blights, and then all of a sudden these massive flame cannon shots start landing next to you, and one of those guys has crept up at the back of you. So the way I kind of deal, as soon as I start any of these, I take the three snipers out. Now, there's, once you take the snipers out, then you've got, you, you're dealing with the adds then, and the, the three elites. Now, of the elites, you can get, uh, hobgoblin snipers, three hobgoblin snipers, which we had in the first run. You can get uh, just normal cabal centurion type of things. You can get arc shielded cabal, which I think we've got here. You can get solar shielded taking uh, captains, which 
for me, it's just the biggest pain in the backside. I really don't like going against them because of the heavy attack and teleporting. And you can get three goblins. The ones, the, the, none of them are really difficult. It's just, the, you know, you obviously want the three, if you can, and sometimes it does work like that, you get the three unshielded in a row. That is much better because it's much easier. So, as you can see, I'm going to toss down a grenade, get some ammo. Kill this, this Taken guy. Now, what I was trying to do here was just try to save a little bit of ammo. So, I'll break any shield and then mountain top. But uh, every time I broke the shield, on well, I say every time, the two times I broke the shield, it actually knocked the, the cabals back uh, into, the, into the blight. So, take out these two blights. Then we've got one more set of three blights left. And that is it. The same, I'm going to do the same thing again. Take out the three snipers. Get a melee, get a melee kill to proc devour. Uh, and then use my grenade on the, on the, the blights to weaken the blights, make it easier to take down. I actually, because I was talking, as I say, I've done this live on, on my stream. I actually lost count of the amount of, uh, blights I'd done. Thought it was the end. I have one more set of blights to do. So I changed to the Tatara's case too soon. So no big deal because the bow was a long range weapon for me anyway in this. And now I've just got to snipe the three hobgoblins. Uh, rinse, rinse and repeat and then we are good. So you see I get the melee attack. Now I'm going to run down here. I can see the three, the three, these are the three hobgoblins. Grenade weakens the blight and all, any ads that come in, they just walk straight through the grenade. And I decided, why not? Let's, uh, let's throw, let's get, get this. I'm not going to use the super because I don't use it for anything else after this. And I decided, uh, we'll, we'll just, I'll just get as much ammo as I can. And we're done. And now I've just got to destroy the, the last three blights. As I say, this is a bit of a... This, this is about as difficult as being on patrol, this part. Because you, you, you kill heavier enemies than this out on patrol. So that is this section done. All that's left now is to clear clear this last blight. Activate Tolan. Tolan will then fly towards the exit. We'll get to the exit. And that will be the next section. And I will catch you guys at the Hexahedron. So, now that we've done that last section, we are heading towards the Hexahedron room. This one was the one I had when I was doing it originally. This was the one I had the most problems with. And Devour is a lifesaver. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how you do the Hexahedron room. Basically, when you go in, it's, it's, it's like a cube room. And there's circles, three, four, sorry, four big circles on the walls. One on each side. Well, there's one on the ceiling and one on the ground. The one on the ground is the one you're going to teleport to after the first room. The ones on the walls and the ones on the ceiling denote where you have to slam. And it's the same idea. You have to create moats. The difference is Toll and Soul will tell you which moats you need to create. So... Those five circles, one's on the walls and the one on the ceiling. One of them, like on that, like here, will have a toll and soul kind of attached to it. As you can see here, I'm looking round. There it is on the right. There's a white, a light mote of uh, font of light below it, meaning I need to create uh, light motes. Then I take them over to it. I slam, and that's the end of this. You will then, after running, either to standing on the centre centre platform or running across it, you will then be teleported to the next room. You have to do, I think, six rooms. Now, there's a bit of conjecture about this. There's a little bit of... I have a little bit of confusion about this. And even though I've done two flawless runs, I still have a little bit of confusion about it. Because, okay, so when, when Toll and Soul's on one of the walls left right front and back that's where you slam when it's on the ceiling the the consensus is you can slam anywhere 
I actually done seven rooms in this run and got two ceiling rooms. So slammed anywhere. Obviously one of them was wrong. So either, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure of it, but you know, the fact I've actually done two runs of this, the mechanics are more important than how many rooms you do. Don't focus on how many rooms you've done. Focus on the mechanics. So when you come into the room, you'd have seen in this room, when you come in, you've got two snipers up and you get two sets of taken acolytes. Focus on the taken acolytes first. So what I do is you can see I'm doing it in this room. The first room I know off by heart. So if you just follow my locations in the first room, you'll be fine. Every other room after that, I stay on the center platform till I see where the snipers are. Then, when at all possible, I move to a position where I'm in cover from both snipers. Then I take down the acolytes. Now, as you can see, Tolan's on the ceiling here. So I'll put down a rift. Every time I kill one of these hobgoblins, I'm going to get my rift straight back. So I, I, I've always got a rift. Every time you kill a sniper, you get, you get a knight. Every time you kill one of the knights, it will give you another sniper. It's just the way it works. So what I do is when I get into the areas, I I, uh, I pop my devour. As soon as the ads start coming up, I make sure I've got as much time as possible and I pop my devour. If anybody doesn't really understand how devour works, devour works a melee kill, uh, a super kill, or eating your grenade, like consuming like a charge grenade, will will give you a perk called Devour. Any kill you get after that resets the 10 second timer that you get. Five kills gives you your grenade back. And it's full super, full uh, health you get back. So as you can see, I don't really run Risk Runner because 21% Delirium or or the, the Mountaintop will get me kills and I've always got Devour. So... I'd rather just get health back on kills rather than be harder to kill, you know. So here we go again, dropped into another room. I'm looking around the four plates. There we go. I need light motes and both the snipers were over on the other side. The ads are in. I've, I've swallowed my devour. Now I'll focus on getting my grenade back. Clearing these kind of trash ads. The great thing about it is these act like spawn taken eyes. The taken eyes count as enemies towards your devour. So you do get health back on, on those kills. Now, normally, as you'll see here, I normally use my sniper for taking the knights out, the, the hobgoblins out. So I need light motes. I'm definitely in the light here. Just wait for him to come. And I'll melee him because he's got nothing left, which gets me, my, uh, even if I'd have lost the vowel, it would have propped it there. Now I'm just going to wait for this knight to fire at me. A great little trick about the knights firing is my chat said when I was doing this that I don't see they, they, they were like, you don't really seem to take a lot of damage from the the, 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 the flames. The Taken's flames. Well, that's might be in part because when the Taken knights fire at you, when they lock on to you, you can stand directly in front of them. And when they lock on with a fire... Just move, as soon as they go into the animation to fire at you, you can either move slightly to the left, slightly to the right, or slightly forward, and the, the flames will miss you. They won't readjust their aim. Another thing is, the plate, once you've cleared, once you've slammed, uh, two, there's two little things I'm doing as well when, when I'm slamming. The first one is, I know when I've got a moat, if I'm getting hit, as I'm running to slam, I can consume my grenade while I've got while I've got a, a moat of light, while, I'm, while I've got a charged moat. You cannot use your class ability. You can't put down a, a rift because you'll lose the moats of light. But you can consume your grenade. Hence why I, I proc devour and then focus on getting my grenade back. Because it's just super helpful. The second thing is you don't have to stand on the plate. Once you once once you slam your last your charged moat, uh, it takes a couple of seconds, but the knights, the, the hobgoblins and the knights, whichever ones are left up, will disappear. Uh, it takes about two or three seconds for that to happen. Once you slam, 
you do not have to go and wait on the plate to be teleported. You can just run across the plate. And as you can see here, I'm just clearing these ads. 21% just makes real light work of them. And I get my health back on every kill. And that's kind of spawn into the room, find out where the snipers are. That's the most important thing because the snipers are the things that can kill you the quickest. So find out where the snipers are and go, go. I rule, rule of thumb, just turn around and go to the opposite corner. Uh, as you can see, if it's not on the walls, you know, I'm I, looking for the snipers. If, if I can't see Toll and Soul on any of the walls, it means it's on the ceiling, which regardless of, of what this run says, I think that the accepted thing is, as you can see he's on the ceiling, is just uh, slam anywhere. So when you're in cover, so the night's here, it, I've got light right on me, so I'm going to try and produce light motes. I didn't, I got dark. So now I'm going to have to get dark motes. Now, another kind of cool thing about the, the motes system is you you can hit the knight. It's not about uh, you, you can only damage the knight when you're in the dark if you want dark motes. You can damage the knight anywhere. You just can't kill him. As you can see here, sorry, I'll digress. That, as you've seen there, I just activated the plate if you're in with a fire team, your whole fire team has to go run across the plate. One person doesn't drag the rest. So this is the first room, and you can see here this is exactly what I do in the first room. I've got I've got it down, you know, pretty standard where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go behind this pillar and I kind of double down in the first room. You can do it in every room. I get my cover, I proc my devour, and then I put the well down. Because I'm going to get multiple wells. So here, as you can see, I'm going to hit this guy and I'm going to change to the 21%. I felt confident of standing in and just melting him. Because I have my devour. So actually paid to be aggressive. And there we go. It does, devour really allows you to play aggressively. Because it actually pays for you to get kills. And now I just propped my grenade again just because the snipers were up. And it's this room's quite open. It, it's it's quite easy to work out, but it's, it's quite an open room. So you kind of are... When I say it's open, I mean you're exposed. I don't have a lot of heavy left here. Uh, but it's, it's, it's no big deal. So just look around. There we go. We need light motes. Where's the snipey snipes? There they are, so we're going to go over here. Actually, the cover in this room is kind of where I'm standing, but just up behind that pillar. But because I've got Devour, you can be a little bit more aggressive. So now we'll take the, the Snipes down. One, and that's one Knight coming in. There's another Knight coming in. We need Light Motes, and we're standing right at the Light Motes. You can see there... I let that knight come at me. Unfortunately, the other knight was coming behind me. That's that's why I took so much damage. But I, as I was saying earlier, I let him hit me, and then oh, I let him engage himself. As soon as, as soon as he fired, I moved, and I didn't get hit by the the guy in front. I didn't get hit by his flame, because. When he, when those knights kind of, as you can see here, it's the first time it's happened. I don't have a grenade, but it's no big deal. I put, a, I put a well down, and I picked up heavy ammo. If I hadn't, of the mountain top would have cleared them anyway. I let that knight engage any shot, like lock on to me, and then I moved and took no damage. I took absolutely no damage from his flames because they don't readjust when you move. They lock on, and that's where they're gonna fire. Now you'll know you've got to the boss room. The boss room always it's always the same room. It's this room. You can come to this this room when you're not fighting the boss. You'll know you're at the boss room. It's when you get to this room, the fonts of light will disappear. So there's the first boss. I always kind of attack him. Uh, normally what I do on the second boss is I put down a, a rift. Uh, 
but I, d- I didn't bother this time. Uh, and I, th- I think the reason why I didn't is because I was I was too busy talking to chat. But uh, that that is this that 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 this room. Your biggest your biggest things are devour. Devour is going to allow you to play a lot more aggressively. Work out where the snipers are, because having devourer is good but if you can get cover from the snipers you should never get hurt if you're feeling a little bit exposed because some of the rooms do make you feel like that then by all means run risk runner uh i don't bother with it i never have i've never used risk runner in there and now that i've got it down i very rarely have an issue with it very rarely uh but Make sure you've always got a grenade before you slam. If it, if you have to, allow the motors to disappear and reset. It's no big deal. You can just start again from scratch. But uh, that is the hexahedron room, guys. Now we're heading towards Rainbow Road, as I call it. The, the ribbon kind of spiral racing thing, spiral driving thing. And then the boss room. Now... There are two ways to do what I class as... What, I'm just going to call it Rainbow Road. Um, what can I say? I'm an OG gamer. Mario Kart. There's two ways to do it. You can jump down the platforms and snipe the snipers. That is... If, you, if you're not confident on a spiral, that is exactly what you should do. Do not risk a flawless run for the reason I do it the way I do it. Which is, I can't be bothered with all the jumping. Now, I, I, I do do the jumping sometimes, but... Again, when I'd done this run, I wasn't actually going for Flawless. I'd done the Flawless on PC, and when I came back to console, I just thought this would be a good piece of content to do my first kind of stream on YouTube again. Uh, and, and I was just talking away. I am confident on a spiral. So, and, and, and the cool thing about it is, if you keep going, if you're confident enough to keep going on the spiral, the snipers can't hit you. Uh... But I think the main reason I actually do the spiral run is it's easier to get the secret chest here, which you are going to see me get. I am actually going to go and get this one. So if you're going to go on the spiral like I, I, I did, be careful. If you're not, jump down the platforms. When you get to a platform, I keep the sniper on. Uh, scan the platforms below you and just take the snipers out before you get there. And I will show you, there is a point where you, you would have to get, well, you don't have to get off your spiral, but it's easier to get off your spiral. And it's where the taking night, uh, the flame taking night is. After that part, I probably would, I spiral, the, the reason I spiral after that part is it's easier to get the secret chest. That is the reason why I spiral. But for these parts, you'll see here, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Uh, I would probably, if you're going to spar, I'd probably change and have a sword on. The sword could, if anything happens and you jump off or you end up off of this, the sword might be able to save you by kind of getting you to a platform below you. If you do, you'll see I actually get hit by a sniper. It's because it's not here, but I stop. The best way to do this, and that's what I'm saying about the confidence thing and, and, and being a, it's not just confidence. It's being proficient. It's it's basically don't stop. You know, if you've used up your three boosts, just change. You know, that's I, I just done it because I wanted to have all my boosts available to me. Just change. You know, if you do get hit, jump off the sparrow immediately. Now you'll see here the reason I get hit is because I kinda slowed down here. My sparrow got hit, I just got another one out and went. And, and and we were all good. And you get off your sparrow here, you kill this knight, and you go up, up here because this puts you on the next your next direct route. And there we go. And you don't have to sparrow up at this next section. As I say, you can use the platforms. But I I really just I really just find it a lot easier, a lot quicker, just sparrowing. But that's me. That's that's you know. So I, I could go. I, I, I won't change the amount of times I say it. it's a confidence thing. It's 
how, how confident are you? I've put a sword on just in case. Now you'll see here that I do the jumping part here. So that simply because it's faster. And once I get onto this one, it's a big jump. I just let myself fall, 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 and glide. I've got the sword to help me make longer jumps should I need them, save my boost. And then onto the last one. And it's after we get out of here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hang about. I'm not gonna try and kill the ads. No need to for me anyway. Uh, again, if you feel confident or comfortable or, or you think that's the best way to do it, then then by all means. No, I spiral because the next room we get into is, uh, is where the secret chest is. And again, you don't have to. You can make the jump into onto, onto the last or into the last pyramid kind of room. It's tight. It is tight. You've got to jump to the, the top of your boost. Cut your boost off, sword swing forward, then boost forward a touch, and sword, uh, sword, and then boost forward the last bit, and then sword. So it's it's kind of tight. But if you sparrow in here, jump off your sparrow, and there it is. Just in between these two blocks, you go down. There is a Sabbath and I down here as well. It's one of the five that's in the the prophecy dungeon. It's you've got to jump from one platform to another to get the secret chest. Sabbath and I is below you. In between the two jumps. I, I, I think I've actually got it here. That's why I don't show it. So it's below you right now. And the secret chest is up here. Easy peasy. I I never get anything decent out of those. I think one time I, I got a... I got an Ikello shotgun. Out of all the times I've got these secret chests. I normally get get the armor that is normally what i get or that completely pointless sniper that's in here but that is us now it's the boss guys now the, i am going to use the anarchy at the boss as i've already said i will do a run uh where i don't use because the very first time i flawless this i didn't use, i didn't have the anarchy so i'd done it with uh uh, the interference six grenade launcher, so it's it's more than possible. You know, it's it's more than more than possible to do this whole thing without the use of the anarchy. I haven't used the anarchy the whole way through, so that is this is my setup now. I'm I'm not. This is the setup I'm going to use: mountain top, uh, bow, and anarchy with devour, and you'll see how efficient it is. The rooms get cleared pretty quickly. And, uh, yeah, that is us at the boss, and I will speak to you when the boss starts. Here it is, guys. We've reached the boss room. We've reached the promised land. Uh, flawless. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to explain how the boss room works. So, exactly the same as a lot of... The mechanics are exactly the same. The mechanics are exactly the same. Uh, you've got fonts of light you have to produce... Motes matching those fonts, uh, and 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 then once you do, you you kill you kill the rest of the ads, and then you run through the center, and start boss DPS. Now the boss DPS is obviously where it gets a little bit different, but this room is very kind of strange because you've got the boss is kind of or a projection of the boss is in each corner. Every time you slam a a, a moat or a slam a charged motor, you will release the boss from that corner, giving you a free corner. So you'll see here, I've created dark motes, slam the dark motes, I'm going to go behind here, put a rift down, the boss now is teleported, and a, a giant ogre takes his place. So how, how did we go about attacking this area? Well, as soon as I came in, I activated the centre part, and, and that gets, that run through Toll and Soul, then I came in front of one of these big stone, uh, big stone things, uh, blocks that have got the fonts of light on them, and put down a rift. Once I put down the rift, I'm in front of because the the bosses can hit you from the other side of the map. If you 
if you're in front of one of the bosses, you're f you're you're the furthest point away from the other two. And if you're in front of that block, you're you're in cover. So if you look back at the start exactly where I started off, then what I do is I pop my devour again, devour, and set about killing all the trash mobs, the 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 taken the taken scions. Set about taking those out. Keep because that keeps my devour procked, and it's one less bunch of ads that's that's going to attack me. Then, then, and that's when I look to see what fonts I need. That's when I look to see what 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 fonts are later there. What motes do I need to produce? Because th they change. So you will notice that you'll you'll sometimes come into a room and you'll look straight away to see what 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 you need. See now, I'm going to put down a rift. We're all good because I'm I'm in and around the corner that I cleared. So. Uh, yeah, as soon as you start this, the, the, the fonts can change. Just do a lap. It's no problem. There's still some ads up. I'm not really too bothered about them. Uh, yeah, so the fonts of light are going to change sometimes. So the idea is get in, start taking down the boss, uh, start taking down the ads, and then have a look. Have a look to see what fonts you need once you've taken the ads down. Now, I'm I'm saying this from the basis of you know step by step, but if if you're a bit more proficient in this, maybe you've soloed this, maybe you know the solo, you just need the flawless. It's once the ads spawn in, the fonts will change. So you find out what they are, start attacking them, and try and work. So when you get the first one, when you get the first font, try and work from that corner right so once you've cleared everything you're not going to get boss dps now i'll explain in the next wave exactly in more detail about the the bot the, the the areas what i what i try to kind of do as soon as i come in as you can see i put a grenade on the boss then i super the boss you can see the anarchy doing work and then and then i try and get maybe one or two mountaintop shots and then it's just about trying, I don't really try and do too much more damage on the boss because you're always going to have these snipers. These snipers are going to appear and, and you don't want too many sets of those snipers up trying to damage you. As you can see, I've completely ignored the boss's location and I've went straight, straight past them because for me the main DPS points as soon as you come in and then at the end. They're the main DPS points. So now I've, I've, I've put two anarchy on them, mountain top, and now I'm going. Now I'm at the end. This is where my main DPS point is because I now can hit him from the last, his last two areas before he gets to my plate. You'll see on the left something called Dark Entropy. That is, that's, a, that's a kind of, that's a, that's a white mechanic. He has an aura that spreads a couple of plates around him. You have to stay within that aura or you get dark entropy. So I run all the way to here. Uh, you can see I'm doing really good DPS on him. I run all the way to this side, making sure I take the snipers out. I'm not having to deal with anything too too heavy. <clears throat> and as, so as soon as he moves from, not to this plate, not to the plate before it, but the, his location where he was far left, where I was shooting at him. When he gets to there... I'm over here. I've cleared all the snipers. Now I start damaging him. When he gets to his location, the plate before the, 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 the platform we were on, I move down to the front because I'll be within his aura and I, he'll remove my dark entropy before he comes to the end plate. That, that really is it. So to, just to break it down now, I can break it down this room uh, because all that happened a bit quickly, a lot to explain. When you go into the room, there'll be fonts of light up. When we go into the, this next room, there'll be fonts of light up. When the ads come in, those fonts might change. So don't, you know, allow the ads to come in. If you just want to focus on one thing at a time, forget about the fonts, pop your devour, take out the ads. Then have a look to see what fonts you need, uh, what motes you need.
to a dark, to a dark and a light, three dark, three light, whatever it might be. Focus on taking down the knights. So this is this room we call I always call the dark room. And there's a prime example. I come in. If I if I hadn't have been aware, I'd have went right. That's a light, you know. And I would have thought if I'd have spun round, I'd have thought two lights in the dark. But it, I mean that's what it is now. You know, it's that it, the other sides are light and dark. It could have they could have all been dark. Focus on taking the ads down. There, there's normally about nine if. There's normally about nine ads. So as you can see, took the ads down. No, I'm going to focus on the knights. I need two dark. I'm over at dark now. And there we go. Really simple. Now the mountaintop, I know a lot of people are going to say, and I'm, I'm going to get this out the way now, and get this out the way now at the end. I know that a lot of people don't have the mountaintop. I could be that I have two trains of thought about that. One, it's been out for two years. If you'd have got a double kill and a calculated trajectory every week, you'd have, you'd have had it for over a year by now. So, you know, the mountaintop is always going to be a really strong weapon for certain activities. So, there's still another 80 odd days to go. Maybe now's the time to focus on getting it. Especially for this. This activity is going to go away in November for a, for a season at least. Now, as you can see, you'll probably notice there you go. Perfect. That's a perfect example of what I do there with the knights. I allow him to lock on to me. Then I move when he locks on. And I take next to no damage from the solar attacks. I take more damage from the boss than I do the knights. So, when you slam, I always come behind this, this pillar here. I put down a rift. I've got Taken Invigoration on, two Anarchy. If you're using Interference 6, it's like two or three Interferences. And, and if, you're, if you're using something other than the Mountaintop, then hit, hit, hit them with that as well. Really do clear these ads. I like to get these ads out of the way quickly. Now, if, you, if, if you're getting pushed by the, by the boss, or by, by the knight, sorry... Don't just try and try and stay alive. You see what I'm going to do here with the anarchy. This is another thing, but the anarchy damage damage the knight, and then just make sure I stay in the light, and I'll produce light motes. I don't have to be in the light when I damage him. I've got to be in the light when he dies. And there we go, piece of cake. I've got heavy over there. I've just noticed. Now, if you don't need ammunition, you don't have to wait. You can go straight to DPS. You don't have to kill all the ads. I only killed them that last time because I needed special. I don't need special this time. I'm going straight to it. So the last DPS was perfect. Was a perfect run of DPS, almost 50% damage. This is what can happen. So this time, what I've done is I've put a couple of anarchy. There you go, a grenade. Jump back up. Super. All going brilliant. Now I'm behind this this pillar. I put two more anarchy on them. And then a mountain top. Perfect. Everything's going perfect. But sometimes, uh, sometimes you'll think that you're doing perfect DPS, and this is going to happen. I'm in cover. I'm behind. I'm behind the block. I'm in cover, and you get teleported. Now I'm kind of glad the teleportation happened because it hadn't happened in the first one. If he hits you. He will teleport you backwards. You then are starting to pick up dark entropy. And you can see I was in cover and still got teleported. So I'm getting dark entropy, which if it gets to times 10, I'm dead. You can see it was at times 8. I managed to get back. I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to bother engaging with them. And I, I've managed to wipe it practically all off. Take out these, these uh, snipers. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna go to DPS. He's already I've missed my usual uh, couple of couple of uh, couple of damage phases that I normally like to get in. Put a grenade on him because if you've got oppressive darkness, you'll see now everything's giving me yellow numbers. And we've managed to make up for the DPS now. As I said, it it wasn't a great DPS, but. 
I was never going to two-phase him because I, I was just under halfway. Just just under half, 50% damage after the first DPS. So when he hits you, your focus, when he hits you in this area and he sends you back, your focus should be getting back to remove the dark entropy. Don't try and do damage from, from range or any of that. Just get back so that you can get the dark entropy off you. I like to stay in front of him. I like him to be moving towards me. You can see the whole game in front of you. If you feel a little bit more confident and you want to stay on each plate and do a DPS, by all means, just be wary of the snipers. Now, I normally wait in these areas till my grenade comes back. Once you've damaged the boss, there's no time limit on how long you can be here. You could wait for your super if you wanted. I, I don't see the point in that, but you, you, know, you can wait here for as long as possible. I'm waiting to get my grenade. So, just a quick recap on DPS. I hit him with quite a bit at the start. And then I move, kill the snipers. I'm moving from plate to plate and then maybe try and get a hit on them. But the plan is to get to the, the far side. Stay in as, uh, for as long as I can in his aura. Get to the far side when he's two, two places away from, from our platform. And then I can do damage from range, and I'm, I'm, you know, there's no, no small ads. I've took out all the snipers, and it's just me and him. Now again, same, same thing. As you can see, I'm putting some shots on, 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 uh, on the knights here. But I'm also taking ads out. So we've got a dark. You can see there. I took out, I took, I took him out, but then had a look to see. If I needed dark, because I hadn't checked. So now I'm just doing a run round here because this is what I call this is the light room. Because there's a lot of light in here. There we go. Now we've got my dark mode, so I can go and grab them and go and slam. So again, I'll slam. He will start to, to run. He will start to disappear. I'll put my rift down behind this plate and kill the kill the ogre and you'll see here uh, as soon as i kill the ogre i'll get my rift straight back taking invigoration so now we need light motes so take this guy out here I, th I think i clear these rooms pretty quickly you know devour as i say i'm you know mountaintop if you're a good aim with it it can really help you don't have to use the mountaintop I've said that a few a few times. I always I always get a little bit eh, about using these sorts of weapons because people are always going to say, "Well, what do I use if I don't have it?" The mountain top, it, it it's not a weapon that I'm like, "Oh, everybody should have that." But with the amount that you have to do to get it, and how long the weapon's been out, yeah, I think that most people could have had it by now. I know some people say I don't like PvP. You know, it's such a good weapon. It's you know, I'm glad it's getting sunset because it's going to force people to use other things. And when I say other people, I mean it's not like I use this for a lot. So here, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm I'm literally just kill this this ogre. You see, he hits me quite hard there. I didn't have to kill him, but you see, because I popped my grenade. If you get those two anarchy shots on him, that's the end for him. You know, you can you can kind of run away, run away, uh, securing the knowledge that he he's going to be dead. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to get a little bit more heavy. We know we're going to kill him in this round. So again, we're going to go for when we do this boss DPS. What we're going to go for is grenade to minimum at the start. Grenade super. Two a and double anarchy and a, and a mountain top minimum, but I have an absolute another one where I'm. Sometimes you'll be behind those those uh, stone pillars on on the platform. Sometimes you'll be behind them, and it doesn't matter. You'll get you'll get hit anyway. You'll get teleported. So I've managed to get everything on them. I'm waiting for you know get another mountain top. So I've got my minimum requirement at the start. Now I'm just going to take these snipers out. And uh, yeah, he didn't like it, so he teleported me. So now there's two more snipers. I'll just, as you can see, 
I just get one hit on him. My melee gives me back my devour. And I was in perf perfect cover again and got teleported again. Now I'm miles behind and I've got Dark Entropy 4. 3? 4 now. I didn't say anything at the start of this, but that I, I, this was a real clutch kill. Because I was so far behind with DPS. So I'll just put a couple of... I'm not going to try and do any major DPS to him because I'm already quite far behind. And now I'll just kill these two snipers. And then go, we're going to try and get some decent DPS on him here. We want to finish him here. Whether we can or not, I wasn't sure if I could but with how much health he had. So, double anarchy. You're going to enjoy this kill. <laughs> I, 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 as I say, when I was when I was doing it, it was like crazy because I was doing it live. So it was pretty crazy. I didn't think at this point I was going to get him. Now, when he goes, you see his body stays. I hit his body, and the anarchy tick damage killed him. Three phase could have been. It would have been a three phase anyway, but it could have been a quicker three phase. And that is the run, guys. Uh, thank you very much, to everybody that's that's took the time to watch. I appreciate all the support I have. I'm glad I'm finally putting this up on the on the channel. I wish I'd have, I'd done this maybe. Uh, two months ago i wish i'd have put it up when i'd done it then but i wasn't happy with the run there will be more videos in the coming weeks i haven't started doing master night night falls because my xbox account isn't high enough yet because i i've had so many things going on and i haven't been able to focus on just leveling and stuff but uh Again, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope this helps you. I hope you learned something from it. And I hope you enjoyed the run. So until the next video, guys, take it easy. And I'll see you then.